yeah, I am just uh, disappointed in myself. I've done a very bad job today. I let the team down. Uh, yeah, I can only be sorry, even though I know it's not enough. And uh... yeah, no doubt. From bad to worse. When it rains, it pours. Whatever idiom you want to apply, it applies. And we never thought, at least I never thought, we'd be saying that so comfortably about Ferrari. They're just too slow. And that's not me saying it. Technically, that's Charles Leclerc, who said that after qualifying. And it's yet another weekend where Ferrari are left out of the Q3 session. Sebastian Vettel makes it through, but his session doesn't really get that much better. But Leclerc's weekend certainly gets worse. After he misses out on that Q3 session, he is then called to the stewards for not one, but two potential incidents, one of which he's handed a three-place grid penalty for. And that's to set the stage for this incident analysis, looking at what happened between Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel on lap one. And not too long ago, there was a very similar incident in which Leclerc entered that Q3 session a little bit embarrassed, downtrodden, and went into the race a little bit desperate. Remember what happened then? All that said, just keep that in the back of your head. Let's get into the incident analysis. All the people who have talked about it haven't focused on the start of the race because I think that's where the opportunity opens up for something like this to occur. And that's not to say it's Sebastian's fault, but his getaway doesn't help. Bethel's starting one grid spot ahead of George Russell. Now when the lights go out, Russell gets to jump on Sebastian immediately. He moves over to the center, takes that position and puts Vettel behind him. Now once Vettel has to yield to George Russell, he then is forced over to the inside of the track where he probably would have protected the outside a little bit more so we can get a better exit onto the racing line. But because he's positioned there, Leclerc is now backed up into Vettel and he's looking at the back end of his car. Surely Leclerc is impeded a little bit by this action and we see a Haas driver who on its own merit seems to have a lot more pace. They are a customer car, so let's just say they're not quicker, but the Haas driver seems to have a little bit more momentum. Now once Haas gets through, we have Leclerc moving over a little bit towards the inside of the track looking for an opportunity. They come up to that braking zone where Leclerc certainly has a little bit of history with another driver at the top of the field. And just before they get to the actual turn, we see Leclerc scoot to the inside of the track and tries to go for a gap. But the problem is, if you look right over to the left, out of his side, you can see three cars going into that turn. Now, there's no room for any other driver. And there's really no room for Sebastian Vettel to move out of the way. What's he really gonna do about this? He can't move to the left. He's fighting two other cars and he can't move to the right because he'll simply run into Leclerc. So he really has no option here. Now, as we look at Vettel's on board, we can see him jerk the wheel to the right and then back to the left. As you can tell, he sees Leclerc and then doesn't want to hit him. So he moves back to the left. The problem is he can't avoid Leclerc any more than he's already trying to do so. There's no room to make that happen. So he simply takes the hit. And here as we take a look at Kimi Raikkonen's on board, we can see the exact same thing play out, except it gets a little bit more clear that there really is no room. The other thing I think is interesting is Leclerc was very adamant someone hit him from the rear. Someone got him from behind. I think I have folks. Someone touched me in the back. Okay. Stay positive. Stay positive. I'm not sure if this is gamesmanship because he knows he's on public radio or this is because he seriously thought someone made contact. And if you look closely, you actually see his rear make contact with Vettel's. The issue is it's because he put himself in a position he probably shouldn't have been in in the first place. So that contact was more just as a violent hit than anything else. You can see him take flight a little bit here. That's because he's forced to go over that curve once the contact happens. What's for sure is that Raikkonen does not make contact with Leclerc. So while some people are reporting that came over the radio, it's 100% false. No one made contact with Leclerc from the rear. It's simply a mistake, and one of which he owns up to, which is good. And the other good thing to call out here that I want to make sure is very clear, and I personally thought was great, especially after the Japanese Grand Prix incident, Leclerc's very adamant about the fact that he needs to come in. And that is something that I did not think that he did well in Japan, and something that Ferrari even today didn't handle well. But Leclerc was very firm and very clear. He needs to know the damage to the rear. Now, at the beginning of the video, I asked you to keep in mind Monaco 2019. And that was really important because we have a situation where Leclerc enters qualifying, a little bit downtrodden, a little bit defeated. He enters the race a little bit desperate, and he gets himself in near miss after miss, and then ultimately ends his race with tires spewing everywhere, him making a dangerous decision to continue on track, continue at the pace. Probably should have been walking that car in, but he wanted to get back on track. And look what happens. 
we do the same thing yet again. And whenever this happened in Brazil in 2019, of course, it's Seb's fault. I was pretty quick to say that. But when it happened, everyone just absolutely vilified Seb. You remember Turkey 2010? How many times did you read that? So much so that I even went back and actually analyzed Turkey to see what everyone was talking about. And that was a decade ago, 10 years ago that occurred. This occurred in Monaco 10 months ago. So if we want to talk about patterns, let's make sure to hold these drivers to the same standard. And an apology doesn't wipe away what happens. So yes, he did apologize. But just like it didn't matter in Brazil, to me, it doesn't matter now because you can't apologize and simply wipe something under the rug. Thanks for checking out this video. I love making onboard videos. They're a little bit risky, but uh, I think that it's worth it if you guys are enjoying it. So make sure to let me know in the comment section below who's at fault. You let me know and we'll be back to cover the Hungarian Grand Prix and whatever happens for the rest of the season. I appreciate it and I'll see you very, very soon. I, I hope I will learn from this and, and we'll come back stronger for the for the next races. I was fighting two other cars. We were already three cars into turn uh, three. And then, uh, yeah, I was very surprised because I had the inside and I wasn't uh, expecting uh, Charles to, to try something. So, um, yeah, I don't think there was any space, you know.